In this online lecture, I'm going to show you how to use hybridization and Vesper theory to figure out the geometry of an organic molecule. And it's a very simple process. All you have to do is follow these steps. The first thing you need to do is to be able to draw the Lewis dot structure of a molecule. And the Lewis dot structure of this molecule would be this right here. The next thing is to use the quick and dirty method of hybridization if you don't already know the hybridization of the central atom. Let's pretend we don't, so let's use the method here. We'll count up our steric number. Notice that means that the steric number for this case is four, which means, remember, he's sp3 hybridized. The next thing you do is count how many lone pairs the central atom has, and he happens to have no lone pairs. And then all you do is think of Steric number four with zero lone pairs, always no exceptions. It means the molecule is going to be a tetrahedral. Or in other words, it has a tetrahedral geometry, which means it actually looks like this. This representation of the molecule is trying to express the fact that all the bond angles are 109.5 degrees. When a central atom has four bonds, and all the bonds are 109.5 degrees apart, we would say the molecule has a tetrahedral geometry. We'll learn more about this way of representing a molecule in another online lecture. For now, just know that we're trying to show the three-dimensionality of this molecule through this representation. Let me show you another example here. Let's say we want to determine the geometry of this molecule. First, we generate its Lewis dot structure, which looks like this. Now, let's determine his steric number. If we count here, we'll see that he has a steric number of four, which means that he's also sp3 hybridized. Then we determine the number of lone pair of electrons, and notice on top of that nitrogen, he has one lone pair. And together, having a steric value of four and one lone pair means that you are trigonal pyramidal. But let's not just memorize this, let's understand this. Let's first focus on the electrons above the nitrogen. Because the nitrogen is sp3 hybridized, those electrons would be in an sp3 hybridized orbital. And here's where Vesper theory comes into play. Vesper theory tells us that lone pair electrons in an orbital take up a lot of space, like this. What that in turn does is compress the NH bonds like this downward, giving them actual bond angles of 107 degrees, slightly less than the 109.5 degrees, which means this molecule takes on a trigonal, that means tri, pyramidal shape, as you see here. Let me show you another example to make sure you got this. Let's say we didn't know the structure of water and we wanted to use Vesper theory to understand it. First, we would generate his Lewis dot structure. Then we determine his steric value, and for that central oxygen, he happens to have a steric value of four, which again makes him sp3 hybridized. Counting the number of lone pairs on that oxygen, we get a value of two. And any time we have a steric value of four and a lone pair count of two, the molecule is always going to have a bent or V-shaped geometry. And again, let's use Vesper theory to make sense of this. To do this, let's slightly rearrange our central oxygen. Let's put the lone pairs right here. Remember, those lone pairs are going to take up a lot of space. In nitrogen, we only had one lone pair. In this case, we have two, so even more space is going to be taken up, which means the OH bonds are going to be even more compressed. In fact, the actual bond angle here is 105 degrees, even less than the 107. Therefore, the geometry of this molecule is V-shaped or just simply bent. Now, don't get lost in the forest here. I know it's a lot of information. That's why we'll always refer to this handy chart right here. Having this chart at our fingertips makes this process very easy. For instance, notice, remember, the first thing we do is figure out the steric number of the molecule. And for water, remember, we got four. Then we determine the number of lone pairs here. And for water, he happened to have two lone pairs of electrons. And together, according to this chart, means that the molecule is going to be bent or V-shaped. Now, you could memorize this chart for organic chemistry or just simply use Vesper theory. 
Meaning this, going back to our example here, since we can quickly determine that the central oxygen is sp3 hybridized, we know he must therefore want to have four sp3 orbitals that are 109.5 degrees apart. But we remember that two of those lone pair electrons are each in an orbital. That would again therefore compress the OH bonds and of course makes the molecule bend or V-shaped. So notice I could use reasoning to get to the geometry instead of just blindly memorizing that chart. It's up to you which method you'd like to use. Let's look at another example to make sure you got this. Here is example four. What is the geometry of BF3? Well again, first this happens to be his Lewis dot structure. And determining his steric value, we get one, two, three, so he has a steric value of three, which means he happens to be sp2 hybridized. He also happens to have no lone pairs, so his lone pair count is zero. This means the molecule has this geometry, trigonal planar, which simply means a flat triangle. And if you remember from a previous online lecture, we know that atoms that are hybridized sp2 have 120 degree bond angles. And that's exactly what this molecule would have. And since we know the central boron has no lone pairs of electrons, there would be no compressing of the BF bonds, so the bond angles stay at 120 degrees. That means this molecule would be flat, and because of the three fluorines, the molecule will be shaped like a triangle. So again, I reasoned my way to the geometry of this molecule. Or again, we can use the chart. What we got here, remember, was a steric number of three and a lone pair count of zero. That puts you right here on this chart, which reveals the reality this molecule is trigonal planar. Let's look at another example here. What is the geometry of this molecule? Well, if we drew out his Lewis dot structure, it would look like this. Determining his steric value, we get one, two, three, so his steric value is three. This causes him to be sp2 hybridized, and our central atom also happens to have a lone pair count of one. In this particular case, that means the geometry of this molecule is bent or V-shaped. How would we use Vesper theory and reasoning skills to get to that answer? Well, remember that central nitrogen we determined to be sp2 hybridized, which means he has three sp2 orbitals about him that would like to be 120 degrees apart. And also the orbitals would all be in the same plane. We also consider that the nitrogen has a lone pair, which would cause these bond angles to compress. Then all we do is connect the dots here. Notice what we have is a bent or V-shaped molecule. And we would know that the HNO angle would have to be slightly less than 120 degrees. And again, the chart reveals that truth as well. Having a steric number of three and a lone pair count of one makes you bent. So this is how we get information about the geometry of an organic molecule. Why do we care about the actual geometry? Well, I'll leave the answer to that to another online lecture. For now, let's just make sure we have this skill.